Diana's going to walk up to the bar and stand in her comfortable stance with her shins about an inch away from that barbell. Objectively, we're looking at the barbell in line with her midfoot, and we are hoping to keep it exactly over her midfoot, which is her center of mass, throughout the entire movement. Dean's going to bend over and grab the bar on the outside of her legs, giving herself enough room to very slightly push her knees outwards against the inside of her locked elbows. Sitting down into position so she can activate some leg drive, Bum down, knees out against the inside of her locked elbows, crown of her head reaching up to the ceiling, pulling her shoulder blades down towards her back pockets to activate her lats and focuses on pushing the world away. Bum down, knees out, shoulder blades down, head to ceiling, push the world away. Knees locked out, hips pushed through. One more rep. Bum down, knees out, shoulder blades down, head to ceiling, push the world away and relax. Okay, the cue of pushing the world away rather than pull the bar up is what I prefer to use. Does anyone know if the deadlift is a push or a pull? It's a perfect combination of both. You guys are getting smarter. Okay, it's a funny thing, but I, I follow a lot of silly forums and stupid arguments online where they talk about, uh, it's a push, uh, no it's not, it's a pull. Okay, it's a perfect combination of both. It is possible to make the deadlift a pure pull. You lock your knees, you bend over, you pick that bar up. And we actually have the potential to pick up a lot of weight that way. Okay, but you are missing out on a large part of the picture, and which is leg drive. To get leg drive, the knees must be bent. Some people misinterpret that and they try and make it a pure push movement. And they squat too deep into the movement. Okay, this is inefficient. How deep should you squat? Does anyone know? As deep as you can, not quite keeping the shins vertical. There can be slight forward knee progression without the bar being pushed away from your center of mass, which is why in a conventional deadlift, I like to start with the bar an inch away. Okay, which on most people, an inch, okay, it could be a little bit more, a little bit less than an inch, but what we're looking at is the barbell over the midfoot. Okay, next, we're going to swap between conventional and sumo. With the sumo deadlift, she's going to stand in her comfortable stance. Everyone is different, and that depends on hip structure, um, not so, more so hip structure than uh, bone length and size. As you can see by Diana, she is very petite, okay, but her stance is quite wide. Okay, with the sumo deadlift, I do prefer to start with the shins on the bar, not an inch away. Reason being, when she sits into position and bends the knees, the tibia or the shin bone goes outwards. It doesn't pass forwards and therefore doesn't push the barbell away from your center of mass, which also allows her to bend her knees a little bit more in a sumo deadlift than in a conventional. Opening her hips to grab that bar, pushing her knees outwards, this is the lift where we can remain vertical with our tibia, or we can keep our shin bone perpendicular to the ground, completely upright, and not push the barbell forward. Opening the hips, arms straight down, which is the most efficient position for the arms to be. Same cues, knees out, shoulder blades down, head to ceiling, push the world away. Knees locked out, hips pushed through. Bum down, knees out, shoulder blades down, crown of the head to the ceiling, push the world away. One more rep. Bum down, knees out, shoulder blades down, head to the ceiling, push the world away. Knees locked out, hips pushed through. And that is a sumo deadlift. There's a few landmarks that we can look for to determine someone's ideal stance in a sumo deadlift. Okay, the most efficient position is one where the knee is directly above the foot and the tibia is perpendicular to the ground. Okay, knee directly above the foot. If the stance is too wide for that, the knee isn't directly above the foot. So when we talk physics, we talk straight lines, okay? The line of force isn't going straight down into the ground. Therefore, can be seen as inefficient, okay? That's physics, right? Physics talks straight lines, okay? But this isn't purely physics. Some people prefer the advantage of having a lesser range of motion and can afford to stand with a slightly wider stance and shift a heavier load. Actually, that's how Dini um, has lifted some very heavy weights in the past 
with a stance that is wider than uh, knee straight over toe, knee straight over foot. Okay, the biggest determining factor is your mobility. Okay, if you lack the mobility to stand with that wide stance, don't stand too wide because you saw Dinny do it. Don't stand too wide because you feel it's going to reduce your range of motion. Okay, wider isn't necessarily better. Better is better. Okay, and it's dependent on your hip structure. A good start point that I look at is the lines on the bar. And that's generally, if I've never seen you lift before, I'll say, just look at those lines on the bar. I'll only ever start you with a light weight. So it doesn't matter if you're slightly off, it's not going to injure you. It's the trial and error game. Okay? But that's roughly pretty close for most, most lifters. If it's too wide, make the adjustment. If it's too close, make the adjustment. Okay, let's go back to conventional. Dinny walks up to the bar and stands in her comfortable stance. Don't bend down yet. <clears throat> comfortable stance. <clears throat> Think of jump stance. Think of a basketballer jumping to slam dunk. Okay, how close is their stance when they do that? Okay, it's actually quite close. Okay, spoiler alert. A lot of people stand with a very wide stance thinking um, it's going to give them the, the widest base of support, the most stability. Okay, it's not the case with deadlifts. One of the biggest reasons why I like to use this close stance, aside from it's one of the most powerful stances, is considering the appropriate uh, grip width. Can anyone tell me what the best grip width is for a deadlift and why? Straight down. Why? Less range of motion. Has anyone heard of a snatch grip deadlift? Can you bend down into a snatch grip deadlift? Okay, so that's exaggerating this analogy. We're going quite wide with her grip. Look how deep she has to sit. Now, keep your butt down and go into a conventional deadlift grip. Okay, notice she's able to adjust her position and stand a lot further away from that barbell because we're in a much more efficient position. Stand up and just rest your back a little bit. Okay, the most efficient position where the least distance can be traveled is where the arms are straight down. Now, some people, if you notice Dinny's proportions, she has very feminine proportions, which is narrower shoulders and wider hip structure compared to me. I'm standing behind her for a reason. My shoulders are a lot broader than hers, but my hips are very similar to Dinny's. Okay? So, because of this, her hip structure takes priority over her grip width. So, for a lot of females that have narrower shoulders than their hip structure, if they try and grab the bar with the arms straight down, just because Bass said it's the most efficient position, they're blocking off their leg drive. They're putting their legs in a less efficient position. Legs, stance, hips take priority over grip width. But we still must consider that the, list, the distance least traveled is where the arms are straight down. Okay, so Dinny considers this and she's standing in a comfortable stance considering that if she has her arms on the outside of that, she doesn't want to travel so far. So she wants them to fall within that grip width. Okay, standing in her comfortable stance with the shins one inch away. When I view the barbell from the side, this collar is directly in line with her midfoot. That is her center of mass. Bending down to grab the bar grabbing it on the outside of her legs, bearing in mind the most efficient position is where her arms are straight down. She also needs to be able to give her knees enough room to push very slightly outwards. Don't exaggerate that. Her stance is very much straight ahead. Slightly outwards is also quite fine. Okay, Knees are pointing in the same direction as her toes. Sitting into position, putting her bum down so she can include leg drive. Pushing her knees very slightly outwards, pulls her scapula down towards her back pockets. Not back and down, just down. Crown of her head towards the ceiling, takes a big breath and holds it, pushes the world away. Knees locked out, hips pushed through. Two more reps. Bum down, knees out, shoulder blades down, head to ceiling, push the world away. Bum down, knees out, shoulder blades down, head to ceiling, push the world away. And relax. Sumo deadlift. Walking up to the bar in her comfortable stance with her shins on the bar. Why can I afford to have her shins on the bar in a sumo deadlift, but not on the bar in a conventional deadlift? Because the knees are going outwards in a sumo deadlift, 
and it's not going to push the barbell forwards away from her center of mass. I want to keep that barbell. Yep. Where does the balance of this point? <clears throat> it's, it's spread evenly amongst her foot, her whole foot. But now she has less balance because instead of having her feet straight ahead, she's roughly on a 45 degree angle. If it's 46 or 44, it's okay. Okay. But now we've got um, less distance from her heel to her toe. Okay, so we've got slightly less balance. So something that a lot of new sumo deadlifters find is they're a little bit off balance. Okay, and that's, and that's because of that reason. Why the stance? Would you need to turn your toes out more or still 45? Technically, yes. The knees point in the same direction as the toes. Okay, some people are quite comfortable with the straighter stance, straighter toe angle. Okay, um, a mistake that people make is pointing them out too much. You point them out too much, exaggerate that. Good. The knees must point in the same direction. Even someone with mobility as great as Dinny can't achieve that. Okay? And there is no belt. She fell over straight away. Okay? So 45 degrees is, is the rule. There are always exceptions to the rule. Okay? Did you do that yet? No. Okay. Standing in her comfortable stance. Toes roughly 45 degrees. Bending over to grab the bar by opening her hips, pushing the knees out in the same direction as her toes. Grabbing the bar with her arms straight down, which is the most efficient position. Sitting into position deep enough so she can get enough leg drive, but also not so deep that she loses her posterior chain component of the lift. Shoulder blades down, depressing the scapula. Shoulder blades down towards the back pocket to activate the lats, pushing the world away. Sitting into position, opening the hips, pushing the knees out. Scaps down, depression of the scapula. Head to ceiling, push the world away. Knees locked out, hips push through and relax. Taking the slack out of the bar. Okay, does, everyone know, does anyone not know what that means? Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate because I don't want you to do shit form. So, so grip, grip and rip, okay? My elbows are soft and from this position, I'll try and build momentum and bang it off the ground. Can you hear that noise when it bangs off the ground? Okay. Versus taking the slack out of the bar. Arms long. Can you hear that click? I've taken it out now. Okay. Slack out of the bar. Listen. You don't hear it. Okay. So that's um, a little trick to help you. Um, it's audible. We can hear that we're taking the slack out of the bar. Uh, the lifter can hear it and the coach can hear it as well. Okay, but some people are still able to not take the, bar, the slack out of the bar properly and take the noise out of the bar. So that's not just it. Okay, arms long, head to ceiling. <clears throat> head to ceiling is a relatively new cue that I use. And I learned it off um, a very good friend of mine who's a martial artist. Um, I don't really like the martial arts, it's Wing Chun. Um, you know, I like more aggressive martial arts. But Wing Chun, he loves it, he's a very peaceful guy. Um, and they talk a lot about things that I love to talk about. One of them is posture. Um, and something that he said that resonated very well with me is to not think about posture as back and forward. Think about it as up down. Okay. Back and forward is a big mistake that I see when people that have the classic, uh, upper cross syndrome, internally rotated shoulders, protracted scapula, forward head, excessively thoracic, uh, excessively kyphotic thoracic spine. That's upper cross syndrome. And how would people correct that? Shoulders back. Okay, so now they're creating a whole new postural deviation with too much tension in their upper trapezius and now they're literally giving themselves a headache and they haven't fixed their posture. They've just gone from one shit posture to another. Instead of thinking back forward when you're correcting your posture, think up, down. Crown of your head, everyone do that now. Crown of your head to the ceiling. Elongate your spine, look at your postures. Okay, what did that do to our thoracic spine? Come here, please, Dini. This is the thoracic spine, T1 to T12. Okay, what did that do to your thoracic spine? Head to ceiling. It extended your thoracic spine. What else is paired with the extension of the thoracic spine? Retraction, depression of the scapula. Okay, so instead of telling you to pull your shoulder blades back and down, if I tell you to elongate your spine, head to ceiling, okay, that's extending the thoracic spine. It's retracting and depressing the scapula. It doesn't need to sit fully retracted and depressed. That's not good posture. Which is why when you walk around to correct your 
forward head posture, that's not making it better. Okay? That's good posture. Okay, everyone think about that when you're sitting down and slouching over your chair. You've got a sore lower back, head to ceiling. Okay? In a deadlift, it takes our body as far away as possible from that barbell, reducing the range of motion that we need to travel. Okay? When you are not taking the slack out of the bar, a big error that people make is getting their bodies down here. I have to travel so much further. And by the time it does engage, it'll take me out of position. Okay? Taking the slack out of the bar reduces the range of motion. It also allows the lifter to be able to feel where the weight is distributed over their feet. 70 kilos. Walk up to the bar. Uh, did you do conventional yet? Let's do conventional. Walk up to the bar with the shins about an inch away. When I say about an inch, okay, that's what I mean. A lot of people will be different. But what we are objectively looking for is the bar traveling over the midfoot and staying there throughout the entire movement. A big error that a lot of people make is pushing the bar away from their body. Okay? Something that we use to stop that is lats. And a cue that we use to activate the lats is to depress the scapula. You don't have to talk like that to your general population client. Pull your armpits towards your pelvis or pull your shoulder blades to your back pockets. Okay, another action of the lats is what? Extension. extension at the shoulder joint is an action of the lats. Do we extend our shoulder joint in a deadlift? Kinda, you just don't see it because the bar's trapped in our body. Okay, but we're actually, we are also actively pulling the bar towards our body. Okay, this is lats. When you see someone deadlifting and the bar drifts away from their body, they're at, their lats aren't on. Okay, we talk about the rule and the exception to the rule. There is no exception to that. The bar drifts away from the body, you're doing it wrong. You need to have lats on. Okay, so we know a reason for lats is to keep the bar close to the body. Do we agree that's a more efficient way to lift? What's another reason why I want my lats in a deadlift? Yeah, there's always tension. But tension just is one of those words that's like, I don't know what the answer is, so I'm just going to say tension because we need to be tight. Protection, like the spine. Protection of the spine. What do we know about the lats? That they go across, like, all the way down. <laughs> it's, it's your Okay, so the lat attaches to the inner lip of the bicipital groove, which is at the front of the humerus, so right here. That's where the lats attach. And they come on the inside and it attaches to our pelvis through our... Thoracolumbar fascia. Okay, so that's fascia that the lat attaches to and that, that attaches to the pelvis. Okay, the lat covers the longest distance of our spine of all 10 of our core muscles. If your lats aren't on, you're not protecting your spine to its potential. Okay, so keeping the bar close to the midline and protecting our spine is why I want your lats on. When we talk about neutral spine, I haven't said that word yet. That's the first time I've said it today. I don't usually use it. It's like tuck of the elbows. I don't usually use it until I need to. Okay, all of these lifters that I coach with the cue of retraction, uh, depression of the scapula, armpits to pelvis, pull your scaps out of your back pockets. That's three ways of saying the same thing. When I use that cue, it puts the spine in the perfect position. Okay, all of the cues that I've used, yes, I want neutral spine, but I don't always need to say it. Does that make sense? Did you do a conventional deadlift? No. Walk up to the bar with the shins about an inch away from the bar. We are looking for the bar to be where? In line with her midfoot. Stance is where? Say it again. Jump stance. Great. Is that close or wide? Close. Okay, what if she had really thick thighs and a huge hip structure? It's going to be a little bit wider. So who are the athletes that we see that stand with the wide stance? Strong men, okay? In particular, the ones that we see are the ones that are televised. And the only ones that are televised are the guys that weigh 160, 70, 80, and the only really ones that we pay attention to is Thor, Eddie, Brian, okay? Those guys are 190 kilograms and plus, okay? The amount of times I've had lifters come to my gym and stand the way Thor stands, and I say, why are you standing that way? And they say, because Thor stands with that stance. You're not Thor. You're not six foot nine. You're not 200 kilograms. 
Okay? That's a big reason as to why he stands with a wide stance like that. Okay? Shin's an inch away from the bar, bending over, grabbing the bar on the outside of her knees, giving her knees just enough room to very slightly push outwards against the inside of her locked elbows. Bum down, knees out, scaps down to her back pockets or armpits to pelvis to get the lats on, and pushes the world away. Head to ceiling throughout the entire movement, which lengthens her spine, also takes the slack out of the bar. Knees locked out, hips pushed through, and relax. Any questions? Any observations? Sumo deadlift. Um, oh, good, you got that there. Good. Sumo deadlift. She's standing in her comfortable stance. Shin's on the bar because when she bends down, the knees are going to go outwards. The tibia is not going to push the barbell forwards away from her center of mass. <coughs> Grabbing the bar. Now she doesn't have knees interfering with her arm position. She can put her arms exactly straight down. Open the hips to grab the bar. Bum down, knees out, armpits the pelvis, crown of the head to the ceiling, push the world away. Knees locked out, hips pushed through to complete the movement. She's standing straight. She's not leaning back too far. Knees locked out, hips pushed through and relax. Relax. 